going to support um, the police. Um, excuse me, psychological slip there. If we're not going to support uh, the struggle, the two-party struggle, uh, then what are we going to support? And one of these um, PowerPoint screens I have comes from the an article written by Nicole Hannah Jones, who's a staff member of the magazine, and this is the New York Times. And um, you know, she's the creator of the 1619 Project, and she teaches at journalism at Howard University. And part of her article said, um, conservative groups have spent the nine months since the affirmative action ruling launching an assault on programs designed to explicitly address racial inequality across American life. They have filed a flurry of legal challenges and threatened lawsuits against race conscious programs outside the realm of education, including diversity, keyword, fellowships at law firms. A federal program to aid disadvantages small businesses and a program to keep Black women from dying in childbirth. I want to say that again. A program that addresses the high infant mortality rate of Black women. Our targets in this new campaign they have. These conservative groups whose names often evoke fairness and freedom and rights are using civil rights laws, i.e. legislation, to claim that the Constitution requires colorblindness and that efforts targeted at ameliorating the suffering of the descendants of slavery illegal discriminate against white people. In other words, they have co-opted the rhetoric of colorblindness and the leg legal legacy of black activism to destroy racial progress, not to encourage it. Those are my words on the topic. I urge everybody to read this article. It's called Civil Rights, uh, from my point of view, it should have been entitled Civil Rights versus Human Rights, but it's called The Colorblind Campaign to Undo Civil Rights Progress. And the minute you hear it's trying to undo the progress of civil rights, you know what the problem is. The problem is, it's not about civil rights, as our ancestor Malcolm X told us. It's about human rights. When you define it as human rights, all bets are off. The struggle by any means necessary is what comes to mind. And I want to address this from the point of view of what we mean by community control of education. As you heard our wonderful warriors of the 60s who spoke with you earlier today, they described the struggle to you. They told you what they did. They told you who they had to fight. They especially addressed the issue of the black bourgeoisie reigning our struggle in the form of civil rights. And as Malcolm has told you, that's never gonna work. What I'm trying to say to you is that the minute we started framing the struggle for education in the form of civil rights, in the form of little girls needing to be escorted by the Attorney General of the United States into an all white school, we were on the wrong trail. We were on the wrong train. The minute you define it as give us back our money we are entitled to as citizens in this goddamn colony, the whole picture changes. How do we know that? And at this point, I want to step outside the role as the chairperson for the Educational Working Group. And I want to salute Sister Lisa for the amazing uh, presentation she gave on the history of the struggle of our warrior, uh, Ralph Pointer Presente, and the concept of community control of education. And the first photo she shows is how we got control temporarily of the school system in New York City. We took it. The picture showing all those cops surrounding Ralph Pointer was just the tip of the iceberg. What the photos didn't show was the fifth grade class that he taught climbing over the fence and taking the school. Yes, the community was inside. The janitor who was new, who had been appointed because we struggled for him to get that appointment, 
somehow lost the key and we found it. So that morning we opened up the school, but it wouldn't have done any good for us to open up the school with the cops surrounding the school if the community hadn't decided we were right. They jumped over the fence again and again and again in all of the public schools that demanded community control of education in New York City. All you heard about was Ocean Hill, Brownsville. Black people are kicking the white teachers out. That was the script. And I want to emphasize script. That was the script that the whole movement got. The black militants are kicking white people who are qualified for their jobs out of the system in their neighborhoods. No, we were fighting against colonialism. And our city was one of the first to put the first black principal in. And I know there's some people in the audience who are laughing. I know Zaki Baruti went through the same thing where he was. We took the schools. We did not ask their permission. We took them. We did put in black principals. But more than that, we hired custodians. More than that, we demanded the contracts. And one of the statements we made is, we're not interested in civil rights, which means integrating with the white colonial power. You control your schools. You control the institutions where you live. We will do the same. The minute we change the script to talk about controlling the colonial institutions and converting them to institutions that represent and serve the people based on the tax structure established by capitalism in this country, which everybody had, they flipped the script again. And so all of a sudden, we were incompetent. Our schools were failing. It was all our fault. We didn't know how to control money. We kept electing all these corrupt politicians. It sounds like the Haitian argument, yeah? It sounds like the argument for why Africans on the colonial, on the, I said colonial, I should say the continent of Mother Africa can't control their countries. These people, they just don't know how to do that. No, that's their script. The truth is, the Africans never controlled their country unless they took it. And that's what South Africa represents. They got a lot of work to do. They still got a Negro philosophy working there. They still got political parties there that are corrupt that they should get rid of. However, the community control issue in New York City was never community control. And I am interested in the fact that there's so many people that are talking about these heroes we had who fought for education. Most of them voted for decentralization. You cannot decentralize the colony. You have to control, you have to take control of it. And so because they gave us decentralization under the control of the Democratic Party, of course you had corruption because the Democratic Party like true colonials, as Queen Mother Moore used to say, they never make a mistake. They know what Negroes to put in power over control of us. Just look at the United States government now, and you know she was right. So we got these corrupt Democratic Party people. And of course, they set up the corrupt colonial structures that did siphon off the money. They pointed their friends in pivotal places, didn't have a clue. They couldn't have made a cat drink milk. That's what the colonials do. They flip the script. And our job is to change the script. Our job is to go in and educate people. If you look at the mayoral controls of schools in select cities in the United States, it starts off with Boston. Then it was Chicago. Chicago finally got rid of them. Detroit, District of Columbia. Los Angeles is still fighting the script. They don't have as much uh, decentralization issues as we do in New York, Philadelphia, Yonkers, and of course, New York City. If you go beneath the discussion about community control of schools, you inevitably hit the big issue. What does mayoral control mean? It means the mayor controls the budget. What does that mean? It means when Bloomberg came in, the Billions of dollars, yes, the New York City school budget, city, mind you, was 33, was 33 uh, billion. I think it went up to 34 billion. Just for New York City, 23rd largest budget in the world. 
That includes many countries, all right? With almost two thirds of that constituency, that the money should be coming back to us in the form of what our tax dollars are putting into the government. That budget is now being given to corporations by their colonial puppet, the mayor. And so when we talk about mayoral control, you're talking about the disenfranchisement of the black community over the public school institution, which is one of the largest colonial federally funded institutions in every community in this country. When you talk about budget and you talk about jobs, if you take down all of the different contracts that are involved in one city public school system, you will understand why the mayor wants it. If the mayor wants it, you will understand they have to put a puppet there to control. And that puppet answers in most large cities where there is mayoral control, where there is a large black population, i.e. colony, it's controlled by the Democratic Party. That's part of their war chest. So what we're saying, and I want to second what my comrade Youssef was saying, you have no time to waste. Doesn't matter if Trump or Biden. Am I the only one that remembers the cowardly caucus of colors voted for the crack cocaine legislation, which enabled Biden to put us in the prisons to such a large extent? Am I the only one who remembers that he came back in the 1990s and encouraged more legislation that incarcerated us? That was deliberate. They put the ones in prison who were the ones that caused the revolution of the 60s. Strategic. They took away our army. They kept the public school budget. Because where you have slavery, you don't have freedom. Education and slavery are incompatible. They know that better than we do. You don't see the Israelis allowing the Palestinians to control their public school system. So I have to, I think I'm out of time here. But what I am trying to say to you is that miseducation is ethnic cleansing. When you go to these local meetings, be it the community board that controls all the elements, housing, education, safety, senior citizens, and transportation, the five institutions in your colony that you're supposed to control, you find, and please forgive me, those of you who are black nationalists, you find the dumbest niggas on the planet running things. Queen Mother Moore said it, they don't make mistakes. They know who to choose to put in place of those funds that are coming down from the feds to the state, to the city, to the local communities. So if you got nothing better to do since you're not going to be out there campaigning for Biden, get into those local communities. I hate to say it this way, but hold your nose, die then, and teach, teach, teach. Remember to use the language that they can understand. You cannot have somebody from the army and an ROTC going in to teach your children history. Listen to what the chairman said about who controls history. Right now, you've got people in these local community boards encouraging the army, the ROTC, to go into your public schools. Last point, for those of you who want cultural charter schools. You can have them and you can make the government fund them as part of the public school system. You want a charter school? Run it after school, immediately after the public school shuts down in the public school building. But don't give up the education public school funds. That's just suicide. Majority of the charter schools in New York City do not want children who they classify as special ed, do not want children who may have autistic issues, do not want children who will not sit down and look at the board and obey the teacher with miseducation. Our rebels are being killed and charted into the slavery system with the public school system because we allow it. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Remember, miseducation equals ethnic cleansing. Community control of education is a blow against slavery. 
And it's one of the institutions that you will now have time to help organize. Run for the PTA, volunteer your services in an after school program, go to your community board meetings. Thank you.